commence with the Pledge of Allegiance this morning, if there's no objection, since none of us has a flag. Um, I think we'll, we'll be okay with that. Has the agenda been posted? It has, Mr. Chairman. All right, Nadia, would you call the roll, please? Nadia? Sorry, Commissioners Adams, Altman? Yeah. Breslin? Present. Budillo? Burke? Present. Clarkson? Here. Corcoran? Dada? Feltman? Here. Freemuth? Yeah. Hedrick? Here. Hearn? I'm here, but I'm going to have to leave the meeting shortly after nine o'clock, just a heads up. Okay. Yeah. Hughes? Here. Pattison? Here. Pye will be a little late. Reeson? Here. Schmitz? Here. Suero? And Chairman Jones? Here. Yes, here. Sorry. All right. Um, I'm going to ask Tom, before we move to the acceptance of the agenda, just to explain the process using Zoom in sure. terms of how we're going to move forward this morning. Well, if you look at the bottom of your screen, it will say participants. If you click on that, it will show everyone participating in the meeting in the right column. And in that column, Nadia will be muting you all. If you want at a point to be heard, you click on the lower part of that column, it says raise hand, and it will show your hand and then Nadi will let you in at the appropriate time. If for some reason we get stuck on that, just raise your hand, just put it like that and uh, we'll, we'll get back to you, so. Very good, all right. Uh, any questions on that process? We are all okay? I <clears throat> I do about five of these a week and have been for the last couple of months, but some of you may, may be new to this process. All right, moving to the agenda. Is there acceptance of the agenda? Move. Any changes? So moved. Okay, there, we have a motion from all. Is second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any abstentions? Okay. Uh, we do not, Anadia, do we have anyone who's requested to speak from the public? Actually, I know the answer to that, and the answer is no. no. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay, answer is no to that one. Now we're going to move to the approval of the minutes for the Airport Commission meeting on March 11th. Uh, all of that was in your packet. If, I hope you've had a chance to review it. Are there any edits, amendations, or any uh, motion to accept as presented? So moved. Second. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Abstentions. No abstentions. Okay, great. We're moving now to the chairman's report, which would be me. Um, you may, some of you may have seen in today's Wall Street Journal, if you looked at it, about the, um, that's hard to say. Anyway. Uh, about the airline industry and just some kind of highlight points. American Airlines has announced it's going to put 141 planes uh, from storage back into service in July, uh, that there's a return to the skies faster than they were anticipating. Delta is reactivating both narrow body and wide body aircraft to its active fleet in recent days. Uh, IATA uh, did reflect, it was in the Wall Street Journal tonight, that airlines are set to lose about $84 billion as the pandemic reduces revenue by about half, uh, but they expect to be profitable back in a couple of years, uh, 2022. Uh, the TSA, interestingly, screened 1.2 million passengers over the weekend of June the 5th. 1.2 million, that's a lot, which was kind of surprised me. That's the busiest since March uh, and uh, since the outbreak of, of uh, the coronavirus. And then Hartsfield-Jackson has canceled contracting for new restaurants. It's hauled at the bidding process for new contracts for airport restaurants, which will be uh, germane when we get to, to Tom's report here this morning in terms of updating you for the airport. Uh, other news just to, to do, I hope you've all been doing well and staying safe. I think it sounds like you have. Uh, we do have the extension of the terms from uh, um, June 30th through December 31st for Patricia Breslin, Jeff Clarkson, and Ken Hendrick. This is what the city council announced a couple of weeks ago. 
And this was all due to the fact of the virus and the delay in uh, uh, reappointments. We also have reappointments or term extensions, which have been approved by the Palm Springs City Council. Kathleen Hughes from La Quinta, Jan Pai from Desert Hot Springs, and Jan Schmitz from Indio. So again, congratulations and welcome to all of you who have been reappointed by your respective cities. And then lastly, uh, Peter uh, Framuk has been reappointed by the supervisors to continue representing the County of Riverside. So congratulations to, to all of you there. Uh, during the interim, since our last meeting, uh, as chair, I did provide a lot of information during the height of the pandemic. Uh, thanks to Tom, as you know, we convened uh, bi-weekly meetings of the chairs of the committees so that we can continue to stay in touch with Tom and the operations of the airport. Uh, and we provided that, uh, uh, that data to you as well. So I hope you found it helpful. Uh, just to reiterate, there is no noise committee today and there's no marketing business development today. Oops, thank you. Uh, let's see, relative to our July 8th meeting, which I assume will continue via Zoom, uh, but I do want to do a reminder that is a meeting that will begin at 5.30 in the afternoon or evening. Remember, we can no longer after this month meet at 8 in the morning, uh, and our request to continue to meet at 8 was denied by the City Council. Uh, and then uh, lastly, just a little bit of news, I've been in touch with the Arts Council. You know that they have been, uh, so many of you know Ann Shepper, who's chair of that. And they've co contracted to clean the art at the airport, and they're coordinating this with Tom at the current time. And this is great because this is a good time to do the, the, the uh, cleaning of the Chihuly pieces, the Sonny Bono bus, the JFK bus, and other sculptures on the property. Um, so that would be my chairman's report. Uh, and I'll, let me pause there to see if there are any questions before we continue with the agenda. Uh, and the next is going to be introductions and presentation, which includes a tribute to Bob Elsner. Uh, any questions to, up to this point? All right, let me turn to Tom then for the introductions and presentations. Very good. Nadia, if you kindly pull that up. So as we all know, Bob Elsner, past chairman of the airport commission for many years, passed away, uh, I think a couple of months back. So here's a tribute, just enjoy. Mm -hmm. His daughter and him went to Hawaii last fall. Oh, um. Very nice. Nice. Okay, next please. Nadia? Sit back and isn't there a, another? Sit, sit back with the full screen. There you go. Nadia. What would you like to show? We have two more in presentations, don't we? Is there is that it? Was that it? I thought we had three items or was it? Well, these, uh, I'll tell you what I can say. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do that now. Our ticketing modernization project is going full steam ahead. 
despite the pandemic. All measures are being taken uh, with the construction. You can see to the right photo that they're wearing masks and goggles and social distancing. The project is going full steam ahead. That previous photo, Nadia? Okay, there, that, that one with the, wasn't there one more with the baggage handling? No? Okay. That's okay, let's proceed. You can see an array of photos there. There's the mm. ticketing area. You can see, okay, let's leave it there. Just going through it, the upper right, you can see the concrete basins being installed out in the ramp. We will have three ovals that where the airlines can retrieve the baggage from. The lower left-hand corner, you can see the back of the house for most of the airlines has all been demoed. So you can see the BHS concrete demolition. HVAC and electrical is going underway and uh, a lot of earthwork. We're redoing some of the utilities in the ramp that have been problematic over the years. So uh, it, it is, it's moving well along and that is a one upside to the slow period here during the pandemic. You can see there also the old Alaska Airlines ticket counter that has been walled off and that is being demoed and they will start getting into the airline ticket office space. Again, the goal is to move that entire back wall backwards 19 feet. You can see them removing the ceiling tiles. We're saving some of them because they match what's in baggage claim. Okay, I think that's about it. So by the time we convene in person here, you'll see quite a bit of changes. Okay. One thing I might well, add. Well, uh, oh, one ahead. thing, and here's the uh, old gift okay. shop. If you're approaching the checkpoint, that was a gift shop that has now been turned into the Alaska ticket oh, counter. Okay. Wow. And there, there we go. That's the one outside. There's two of the carousels. The third will be installed soon, and that's where the baggage will be retrieved by the airlines, which is a, a world of difference compared to what they're doing today. So that uh, concludes the uh, presentations, Mr. Chairman. And what I was going to suggest to you, and we've done this in earlier reports, I've been out to the airport several times during the last couple of months just to stay in touch with Tom and to see the progress. All of you as, as commissioners are invited to reach out to Tom Absolutely. and to come visit and see the work in progress. So I would, I would encourage you to follow up now that you've had kind of a, uh, an introduction of what's been going on. And it's really quite stunning. When I walked in this morning from the time I was here a couple of weeks ago, the gift shop had been converted to Alaska Air, and it's really quite impressive. Of course, there's nobody in the terminal. Well, don't say that. No, Mr. I didn't mean it that way. It was too early in the morning when I came. <laughs> it was 7 a.m. when I got here. So there's not a, you know, anyway, uh, people are flying and moving around. Um, any other uh, introductions or presentations? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Know, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, is uh, the city manager with us? David Reddy, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good morning. Great. I'll turn to you, David, for the city manager's report. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, most of it's been covered. Not much to say other than uh, we're going forward with the, uh, the budget process. Uh, the Thursday, city council we'll have the first look at the um, airport budget and then the public hearing for budget approval will be on the 25th. So um, that's about all I have, Mr. Chairman, unless anyone has questions. Are there any questions for the city manager? Yes, can I just confirm something? Yes, David, go ahead. Is there any personnel impact in the city budget cuts to the airport? So we're, we're looking at probably about um, 82 positions citywide that uh, will either be uh, frozen, um, there'll be frozen positions, early retirements, or layoff positions. Now, obviously, because of the federal grant of the 11 million, that obviously has changed the dynamic considerably, significantly at the airport. So there are no, not going to be any layoffs at the airport. There are uh, a couple early retirements and uh, Tom, I'll let you uh, address that, the specifics. Was it two or three that just chose to take the early retirement? We're gonna cover that in the uh, budgetary right. discussion in a few moments. Yeah, so other than that, uh, they're, 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 the, the, the airport budget <laughs> by and large has, has been 
spared any of the cost reductions because of the eleven million dollar grant. Had it we not received that, we would have been looking at almost probably seven eight million dollars worth of reductions that would have been required. Okay, thank you. Sure. It's for Dr. Reddy. Okay, we can proceed. Okay, no questions. We're going to move now to the budget and finance report. So I'm going to turn to Tom and thank Tom, you, I'll let you Chairman. move it from there. I think they'd rather look at the concourse. <laughs> well, as the city manager just explained, uh, there's an extreme austerity posturing going on, as, as it should for just about every business. Uh, the, the city general fund has done an extensive, extensive job, and uh, the enterprise fund for the airport has also done that. So, Mark, why don't you bring that document up, Nadia, please? The doc yeah. Yeah. We're at the, we're at, I thought we were in the discussion items. Or we, are, we know we're at the budget oh, and I'm finance sorry, report. My, my apologies. So uh, finance report, do you want to do that, Mark? Go ahead. So item 10 in the packet, just uh, to go through where the airport is at at this time. Uh, as we all recall, the, the COVID-19 situation hit us very deeply about mid-March. Uh, fortunately, by that time, we had collected virtually 95% uh, of our revenues for March. So with that being said, the, the revenue funds, the customer facility charge, we're at almost 98% collected a budget today. The passenger facility charge, 98%. Our general airport revenues are about 78%, which uh, compared to our expenses are very much in line. So we've been fortunate as revenues have been reduced to also cut corresponding expenses. And our AFP grant revenue has been slower than normal. Uh, we do anticipate opening bids on a project next week and we should have a new grant for that as well. So that will be coming in the next fiscal year. Moving to page two, uh, the expenses that, as I had mentioned, uh, middle of the page are operating and maintenance expenses were about 75% of what we had budgeted for the year. So. We've, uh, we've been very conservative with everything we have spent since the situation for COVID-19 has come about. And uh, as David had mentioned, the, the airport budget is actually in uh, relatively good shape. With that being said, I think we're all aware of the federal grant that was awarded to Palm Springs at just uh, over $11 million. So that will certainly offset uh, any minor shortages that we would uh, witness for this fiscal year and then carry forward into next year to uh, make the difference on, on any funds that are necessary. On page three of the financial report, just taking a look at our cash position, uh, toward the bottom of the page, our fund 405 for CFCs is just over $24 million. So um, that's good news. That, that money will sit there until we uh, ramp up with our rental car project again and, and get that underway, hopefully sometime later next year. Fund 410, our PFC restricted fund, uh, we currently have a balance of 1.9 million in, in that fund. Uh, as you may recall, the annual debt payment on that for principal and interest is about two and a half million. Uh, so keep in mind, we do have that amount of money in a separate, in a reserve for our PFCs. So this 1.9 million is in addition to the 2.5, it is set aside to make the PFC bond and principal payments next year. And uh, that is, is also a, a, a nice cushion and, and very conservative position, so we won't have to dip into any reserves for PFC bond payments. The capital restricted fund is just over $8 million, and it's something we can use in the future if necessary. Uh, at this point, many of our capital projects have been deferred till a later time and once we get back to a, the new normal. Uh, and then the airport fund 415, again, has a balance of $8 million, so, uh, it's, it's good that we have those set asides and the airport is actually, should be able to weather this nice. We're, we're gonna get into the budget in the next second. Uh -huh. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Okay. Let's move right into the budget. We'll move right into the budget. We, we're already hitting on that, but I think what needs to be said is that uh, every airport in the United States has been probably the best word, inviscerated as far as financial revenue is concerned. So uh, recognizing that immediately upon the pandemic, we uh, 
with the general fund and the, and the other city initiative, we take a hard look at everything that we procure. So with that being said, we have the budget document up. Mark was starting to touch on that, but let's start at the top with that. So now. why don't we go to page one? There. Page one, page one, all the way up. Page one. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. So I think it's, it's important for everyone to, uh, we all realize that the revenues at the airport are driven by the number of people who go through the facility. With that being said, one of the, the fundamental things we wanted to look at is our projection for passengers as we look at next year. And we have tried to mirror the very conservative approach that the city has taken. So going through the, the report here, we certainly expect our, our passengers through the summer to be quite low. Um, July and August, 80% less than a normal year. September and October, 70% less. And then we're hopeful by the time the holidays roll around that uh, we will receive uh, some new flights, uh, especially from Canada and some of our top markets. So we're, we're optimistic there. The one thing to point out as the notes identify, the scenario follows the city modeling with major events canceled in March and April. So again, fairly conservative approach. And that was the basis that we're looking at with for a 49% reduction for passengers for next year. So are there questions, Mr. Chairman, on the forecasting of activity? Again, to emphasize, the general fund went through an extensive analysis and we pretty much mirrored that under the auspices of the finance director and city manager. Thanks. Any questions up to this point? Uh, I have a comment. David, okay. Yep, just wanna let you know that on the vacation rental side of things, um, some of our uh, owners are, are having um, sort of communication from their Canadian um, winter tenants that they're considering not coming due to health insurance concerns, something that's changing um, in terms of the ability to get health insurance when they're here in the US. I don't know if that's how widespread that is, but it's something you might wanna look at. Great. Thank you, David, for that. Any other questions? Let's go to page, next yep, page, go to page, page two. two. So following the passenger projection, our, our revenues, top part of the page, uh, by major categories also reduced by about 48%. And you can see the, the various and different areas there. Um, we're, we feel that this is relatively conservative, but we uh, wanna go into next year with a, a realistic approach and that is the current uh, scenario looking at uh, total budget revenues of 14 and a half million as compared to uh, what we had approved last year 27.7 million um, on the expense side again we're, we're looking at the the major categories by department and the expense only reduced by seven percent we have many things that are fixed here from uh, from payroll salaries and various sundry other things that certainly the utilities and uh, some of the expenses the uh, that will continue to go on so we were not able to reduce expenses by a similar amount but with that being said the cares grant will will bridge the gap you can see at the bottom of the page we, we expect to use about 8.6 million of our cares grant fund to uh, make certain that we have a balanced budget and we do not have a deficit situation. Uh, just below that, you can see the CARES grant funding, uh, the grant $11,667,000. We may use two million of that this year just to make certain that things are balanced. Um, and then next year, 8.6 million, leaving a balance in the CARES grant of 337,000, which is not much, but it is a, a margin that we could use for any unforeseen condition. Let's and the bottom of the page, just real quickly, the things that we did pull from the budget, uh, 1.5 million in capital projects, payroll deductions, operating and maintenance for a total of $3.4 million. So page three is just a summary of our cash on hand. This does not include the PFC fund or the CFCs, primarily our operating revenue or operating cash uh, total operating cash, 13.4 million, which includes our reserves for our PERS and, and um, airline reserves for unforeseen things. Capital, 2.3 million, which we've already taken out. Uh, funds that are allocated for projects next year, which includes our matching share for the Ticket Wing project and to, to finish that. Um, and then 2020, 
um, again, there's the, we may finish with a slight uh, deficit, but we'd use CARES money for that. 2021, if we finish with the 8.7, you can see that currently we have uh, $26 million, including the CARES grant fund. And uh, we would finish next year with still $16 million, which is actually slightly greater than just our, the airport cash on hand, not including the CARES grant. Um, and that is a brief summary of that. So we're, we're very optimistic that the airport can continue through next year in a uh, relatively good position. Are there any, any questions up to this point? Are we unmuted? No, no we're, we're already, you can talk. We're, okay, yeah. yeah, thank you to both Mark and Tom. I had a question with Tom though, in terms of the early retirements and others, if he can explain to us more fully what the reduction in staff has been at the airport and more importantly, what effect will this have on the airport operations? Well, the city offered what they call an early or voluntary retirement. That was the first step in the austerity program. Um, we're happy for those that are retiring, but unfortunately uh, there were eight positions out of our 75 here that took the retirement. Mark happens to be one of them. So Mark is scheduled uh, to, to retire by the end of the year. So um, what was your second part of that? Oh, what is the impact on the airport operations of the staffing reductions that will not be refilled at this time? Well, with only 76, uh, 75 FTEs uh, from, we have one administrative position, two operations positions, two maintenance positions, and, uh, and three police officers. Um, I think my best answer to that is we've, uh, over the years, we have developed the organization to provide an exceptional level of service, safety, and efficiency. Uh, if we don't replace those positions, then we're going to obviously not deliver exceptional, but probably going down to more of the average. So that's the best way I can explain it. In no way, shape, or form will it be unsafe or uh, inefficient, but it will be running at an average, and we've worked hard over the years to get to this level. So, Mark, can we convince you otherwise? Do you, you can have my office? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's not put Mark on the spot. Uh, what, what? Any questions for Tom or Mark up to this point before we proceed? Okay, Ken. Uh, we had we had budgeted a person to um, do airport marketing, and I think we also budgeted for a engineer to help with construction. Were both of those positions uh, deferred? The engineer was filled several months ago. And then with the advent of the pandemic, the city had a hiring freeze on any new positions. So not only is the air service marketing, but many other positions within the city are frozen. So that is also a reduction in, cause I, it was in the budget, correct? It was. So that is a, a cost savings. And that is the, the policy of the city council freezing any new position. Right. Any other questions for Tom or Mark? Relative to the budget, if not, then let's move on to the uh, airport concession lease status. I thank think. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To put it again succinctly, uh, airports nationwide have been pummeled in regards to uh, the more passengers. There are several revenue sources which are absolutely indicative of number of passengers, the number of car rentals that are rented, the number of concessions that are bought and consumed and uh, a lot of other aspects of the operation. Unfortunately, well, let me back up a little bit. If you recall, we've been diligently over the last half a year or so putting together a new request for proposal for food, beverage, and gift concessions. We currently have two contracts or had two contracts which expired after 25 years. A lot of effort was put into that by the commission, the council, and staff, and uh, we put the two existing concessionaires, HMS Host, who does food and beverage, and Paradise, which does the gift, we put them on a month-to-month -month basis because if you recall, 
in previous presentations, conversations, the timing of the RFP due to our reality that we could only do construction during off season, it was prudent to put that in a slight abeyance and keep the concessionaires on a month to month arrangement. Now, since the pandemic has hit, HMS Host, who does the food and beverage, uh, in, in no shorter terms is a, an extreme financial deprivation and, and condition. They have opted to not continue their month to month arrangement. They had, uh, they had indicated it was all part of streamlining the country, uh, the entire company uh, to get through the pandemic and then uh, rise out of this at a later date. So they have exercised the right to not continue the month to month. Uh, what we have asked them to do just for the relationship that's been so strong over the years is to hold on for another 60 days as we work with the other concessionaire, Parodies, and to, uh, in fact, Nadia, if you could please pull that up, the exhibit regarding that. So one has to ask, well, Parodies does gifts. And uh, that isn't just the case. If you can, uh, this is, this is. We immediately went to Parities and said, "Okay, how can you fill the void?" It's in their agreement that we have some options for them to provide food and beverage. They do already with Snicker bars and burritos and and beverages, but we asked them to take it up a notch. So they will expand their offerings at PSP Airport to include prepackaged fresh food. And if you look at the grab and grill. Uh, assortment, which would commence July 1st, hand-wrapped sandwiches, packaged sandwiches with assorted breads, green salads, fruit cups, vegetable cups, uh, hard-boiled eggs, yogurt, and coffee in, um, in a socially uh, more acceptable K-cup selection. So that will fill the void starting July 1st. And as everyone knows here, our off-season is uh, slower, considerably slower than peak season. So uh, as much as I hate to say it, the timing is good because they will take over as we are recovering with increased traffic on a month to month basis, Paradis is willing to gear up. Now HMS will be leaving <coughs> several concessions behind and they will take us, uh, they are going to work to take a certain amount of equipment. We're going to try to convince them not to, uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. And then as the market matures again, Paradis will have the ability to quote unquote fire up those concessions, starting with the Starbucks. Now the good news is the Starbucks has license agreements not only with HMS, but also with Parities. So that is very good. We all would like to see a full fledged Starbucks. We have two of them here. If you could slide down to the next slide on Parities. I thought there was, oh, that was it, okay. But Mr. Chairman, uh, bad news, good news. And this will hold us over until the, uh, the appropriate time where the commission and council decide, let's go out RFP. In retrospect, had we gone out for the RFP and this pandemic hit, uh, it wouldn't have been good yeah. because uh, it very well could have worked out where we made a choice and then that company ba basically financially collapses and it would have put us in uh, some, some real hurt right. at that point. So. Let me turn to the commission members to see if any commission members have any questions for Tom relative to this particular item on the airport concession lease. No questions and Tom, would you continue with the car rental agreement extension update, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the car, Marco had explained the expiration and then what we did with that. So this has been coming for some time. The airport commission actually in fit at their February meeting approved a one year extension with four one year options. Since that time, we certainly have experienced the pandemic situation and the car rentals notified us that they did not want to enter into that sort of arrangement because the options were at the sole discretion of the city. With that being said, they certainly are willing to continue a one year extension and keeping the current terms and conditions, keeping the current operators. And they feel strongly that a year from now, we will have a much better idea of how things look moving forward. So we will be uh, taking just a one year amendment to city council for their consideration. And we certainly wanted to let the airport commission know that the, the, the deal that they approved in February has changed. 
Thank you. Any questions about what's going on with the uh, rental car extension and agreement? If any of you have driven around the airport, I think it's what, 7,000 of their cars are parked on the airport property? That's correct. So 7,000 rental cars are parked. If you drive around here, if you go through the Kirk Douglas um, shortcut, I call it, uh, you'll certainly see them uh, around. It's called collateral. It's called yeah. That's <laughs> collateral. That's the collateral. Yes. All right, any questions relative to uh, the car rental agreement? Okay, then let me turn to the next item 12, the executive director and staff report. So Tom, your report, please. Thank you, please. Mr. Chairman. Ticketing is moving swiftly and, and doing well. Uh, the passenger boarding bridge is out on the street and we've got a lot of interest. There's about three companies in the United States that uh, are in that type of business and interested. And those bids should come to fruition soon. And we're anxiously awaiting that. Again, it's an opportune time given the, the upside to the pandemic, it did slow down to be able to pull out these projects and do it without minimal disruption to the organization. The aircraft rescue and firefighting truck replacement, part of our airport capital improvement program, has been bid out and awarded to a vendor, and that PO should come any day. We'll give them the notice to proceed, and hopefully within the next 12 months, we'll have our new trucks on board. Uh, the car rental project itself, I, I, I do hope that Everyone realizes we are going to come out of this. I happen to think that the Palm Springs market is a little more uh, elastic and will have a, a better chance than the, the normal markets for a lot of great reasons. And that the car rental project is still pertinent. Now, if we were to look at a silver lining about the pandemic again, and we must look at that is, if you recall our car rental project projections based on 2.6 million passengers had an extraordinarily high 1.4 million square feet of new car rental facility. And if you recall, when we modeled that and put it next to the terminal building, it looked like a terminal building attached to a car rental structure. The council wasn't happy about it. Uh, not many of us were. We were in the process of looking at alternatives and that site right off of Kirk Douglas where there's about 3,500 of those 7,000 vehicles parked, and uh, we had come up with some great options there as well. So, long story short, we are coming out of this pandemic, and we're going to be strong uh, again, and and we're very confident in that. Right now, we need to continue, not right this moment, but uh, within the next couple of months, we need to, again, bring that, dust it off, and start talking about it. We've got 22 million in CFCs, that are ready and waiting. I think the bond market might be more favorable now and it, it'll become more affordable and we do not need probably 1.4 million square feet, but something that's more manageable. Right. So that's the silver lining to that and I hope we keep that dialogue going. All right, thank you Tom for that report. Any questions of commissioners of Tom on his report or any other aspect of the airport? Question on the car rental. Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, Kirk Douglas. I mean, are you working with the uh, with the uh, architects? I mean, is there a new um, a new plan, let's say, to relocate to Kirk Douglas, or are you just uh, saying that that was an alternative on the original plan? Well, that has all cessated. It, it, it has stopped. We have stopped any expenditures and told Gensler Architects to stop, and that's been several months. Mm -hmm. I, at at the point when we pick it up again, we will essentially have to re -go, uh, redo a lot of the capacity exercises, redo our okay. forecast. And I was just indicating that we were forced into that second potential alternative based on the, the massive size of the right. 1.4 million, which was incompatible with the terminal. Right. So now if I were to conjecture that 1.4 million will probably be below a million and we might be back to the original site to bring a level of comfort and aesthetic compatibility that the city council expects and to preserve other uh, convenience and amenities for our passengers. So there is no work being done on that until yet to be determined. Right. Okay, so eventually there'll be a redesign and a resubmission of the project. Yes, well, we, we never designed it. That was all conceptual. That was uh, the- Well, that's what, I, that's what I mean, a new concept, basically. Y yes, a new concept, correct. I have a question. Yes. So, um, I'm usually a pessimist, but um, in this case, an optimist. If we have 
are scaling back to a 1 million square foot facility. Um, what happens when our uh, capacity exceeds that? Is there, Gensler going to work on some sort of, sort of modularity for what would happen um, in case, or at the point where um, we're actually scaling beyond the 1 million square foot facility? Well, uh, that, that's a question that will be answered when we pick the project up again. So it's a valid question that will have to be answered as we reignite the project itself. Thank you. Other questions of Tom? No? Any further part of reports, no, Tom? Mr. Chairman, All I right. think I will conclude. Then that we move on to the commissioner requests and reports. Are there any requests from commissioners for reports, questions? I have a comment. Yes, Bill. Uh, just a comment. Uh, Tom earlier was talking about the uh, ticketing project and all the uh, construction going on and uh, invited commissioners to uh, come uh, uh, over there and he would give us a tour. I took him up on that and uh, Tom did an excellent job of showing me all around uh, what was going on and all the construction and I encourage any other commissioner that's interested to take him up on his offer because he did a great job of yeah. showing me around. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bill, for that comment. I, he, as I, as you, I mentioned earlier, I've been out two or three times. He does an incredible job. And along with Bill, I urge every commissioner who has an interest to really seeing firsthand to reach out to Tom and at your convenience, Tom will show you around and exactly what's going on. Other comments or questions from any of the commissioners under this agenda item? Yeah, it's me, Peter. Yes, Peter. Uh, I have a question on the uh, um, schedule summer report that uh, was sent out. It looks to me um, that most of the carriers are going down to regional jets or uh, are there uh, capacity controls on, on, on others or a combination of that? Can you comment on that? Well, my wife and I recently flew last week and we were on American Airlines, a, a medium-sized jet, and it was probably one of the most nicest flights we've had in years. Uh, the airlines handled it wonderfully. We felt very comfortable and safe, and uh, it was a larger jet. So I think the airlines are going to experiment quite a bit, keeping in mind that they have agreements with regional pilots uh, and, and so many regional pilots and captains and so forth. So we will see a lot of modulations in the behavior of the airlines as they play with different markets. And one of the reasons I, I hope you agree with me is we are such a unique market. We're a world-class destination. We have a higher demographic, higher spend, and the airlines will be eager now that we've proven ourselves in the, in the world of the airline industry with hitting 2.6 million passenger, passengers, double digit growth, Mr. Chairman, for two years, they know that we're a hot market. And when we get our sea legs back in, into full bore, the airlines will match and, and bring back capacity as needed. Some might be regional jets, mm -hmm. some might be medium. I don't think we'll see the 767 that Air Canada brought down again <laughs> for a while, but uh, we, we're very confident with that, so. Yeah, yeah but I mean, still, my, my question, so uh, some of the carriers, uh, uh, having capacity controls because I mean if you look at uh, American and you say 99 seats per day uh, so what does that mean is it uh, capacity controlled or regional jet or what is it well it's a combination of the above they're capacity controlling the jet we flew on the most airlines have a policy now to unless you're of the same family to provide some additional spacing either through the middle seat or or manipulation of other seats. So it's a combination thereof. So Peter, to answer that question, perhaps a different way, many of the airlines have gone to contracted services and the smaller jets are contracted this time. Many of their own crews have been on furlough. As Al mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, American will be bringing back 141 of their aircraft. Delta will be bringing a larger mm -hmm. aircraft back next month as well. Uh, in Palm Springs, what that means today, for example, we have a seat capacity leaving Palm Springs at 732 seats out. Of those seats, 402 uh, are booked passengers. So we're, we're already at over 50% of the capacity leaving, which is a good sign for this market and, and hopefully warrants larger aircraft coming here soon. Okay, thank you. Good. 
Any other any other questions? Patricia Breslin here. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to inform you. Uh, I some of you know I'm on the mayor's task force for the retention and transition to reopening for the businesses. And um, one of the issues that comes up uh, quite often is um, the issue that in Palm Springs, face masks, masks are mandatory. And many people get confused because so many other areas don't have them mandatory anymore in many of the situations that we do. So I didn't know how the airlines were addressing um, when the passengers um, depart. And, or I know they must have face masks themselves on board, but um, if there's any way we can use signage in um, in the airport to inform people that face masks are mandatory in a in a comfortable way that it's for their safety, you know, I I, I don't know how it's being approached. Well, it isn't comfortable. It is mandated in the airport and. We see great success with that. If you walk into the airport, there's a message that plays every five to 10 minutes indicating social distancing and masks. Great. Staff does enforce it. Uh, airlines do enforce it. If you get to the gate, the airlines will likely ask you to make, uh, obviously keep the mask on when you get on the aircraft. But we are expecting a shipment of tens of thousands of masks from the FAA through the federal government should be arriving any week now that could be used for uh, passengers and or uh, other staff. So, but I can assure you that that is being respected here at the airport and we are watching that very closely. Thank you I for that. I so, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, let me add too, again, if you get a chance to come out, you'll find the signage is rather extensive, the, okay. the, the stations for, for cleaning and et cetera. Uh, Tom has done a great job here at the airport to make sure that passengers who come in or leave are really aware of the requirements required by the city of Palm Springs. So uh, you would see that in action. Appreciate uh, it. Any other questions that we have? No, okay, report on city council items. I don't know, David, if you wanted Al. to make any comments. Al, sorry. Yes. Hey, it's Todd Burke. Yes, Todd. Uh, just one question. I know under the CARES Act that uh, all airlines are still required to maintain service, albeit on a, a, a slightly reduced basis to every city they serve. Do we know, have any airlines asked for an exemption to remove Palm Springs temporarily from, uh, from their routes? Yes, Allegiant, JetBlue, and Frontier have, and it's gone back and forth. They're, this is new for the federal government, new for the airlines, so they've gone back and forth. At one point, they asked it, were able to pull it back then they had to bring it back in some cases and now they've finally gotten sanctions to pull it back in fact JetBlue will no longer be serving New York and I forget exactly the date but it's been back and forth and uh, we've been cooperative with that because we know by the time we are getting back and the demand grows they told us they remembered that we supported their need to uh, adjust their schedule. That was when there were three passengers right. per aircraft. Right. And that was, uh, I think, a very smart thing to do. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Todd. Just as a, as a comment, uh, the, the CVB has been supporting uh, that, uh, uh, that request from uh, JetBlue in particular uh, because of the good relationship, because it doesn't make sense for them to, to fly at this point you know, in the summer. Uh, and um, that will just really basically support the relationship as well, and they will come back. Yes, it's great. Thank you, Rolf. Other questions, comments? No, okay. Uh, I, David, if you're here still, did you have any um, reporting council items? I mean, it's in the agenda that we have. I didn't know if you had any additional comments you'd like to make. Uh, no, I think uh, it's all been covered. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Nadia, any correspondence? No, Mr. Chairman. All right. We're down to the receiving and file. You have the activity reports that were sent out. Um, clearly, you've had a chance to review those uh, and make some comments. So we're now up to the point of adjournment, uh, but I'm going to ask one last time, uh, are there any commissioners who have any questions or comments before we adjourn? Okay, seeing none, before we, we take a motion on adjournment, just a reminder that our next meeting would be on July the 8th. At 5.30 p.m., I'm assuming we will continue with the Zoom format. 
uh, for some time to come. Um, so now I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Move. Okay, second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great, thank you to everybody. I, I know this was a, a unique way to have a meeting, but everybody's doing it and we're doing it successfully. So thank you for your participation this morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.